Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted unto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. If you move people left and you say, sorry, I thought it was right. They now go right. They now go left. They will love you, but they stand back and say, please, let's leave this guy as he goes right and left. He, he loves God, but it's clear that he doesn't know where he's going. And people turn and look for direction. I'm praying for you in the name of Jesus. I don't know what is next in the script of your destiny, but by the power of the Holy Spirit, my God will reveal it to you expressly. The next script of your life, let it be revealed for you. And hear me, where you have already assumed a blueprint that is not in your blueprint, whether it came by flesh, it came by emotions, I pray from my heart for you. May God give you the courage to cancel and shelve it now. Cancel and shelve it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. If you are working with God, you must have the flexibility that when you realize that this is not God, I know somebody who made up his mind, he sent me a text one day, you know, just maybe three or four years ago, that God asked him, you know, to build a house for his family. And I may not know everything about God, but I know how God works. I said, this guy does not have the capacity to do that kind of thing. And I, I, I know how God works. I said, no, this is not. But the gentleman, you know, took a step of faith and went, did this, borrowed money, got into all kinds of trouble. After a long time, I didn't hear from him. He now reached me and said, I should pray for him. God has, you know, he doesn't understand this thing about God again. He's really frustrated. I said, my friend, it is not God. It is your confusion about him. And right now, you are bleeding. You are in trouble. They will soon jail you. The way out is to go to God and repent. Are we together? Repent and say, Lord, you've met me in the middle of the fire. Okay, I'm sorry. Don't leave me there. Don't leave me there. Some of you now, one of the, there is the gift of pain. But let me tell you this. Most people's pain is an indication that you are out of, of, you are out of the will of God. Don't fight the pain. Use it as a check to go back and say, God, why is my life difficult? Why are simple things unusually hard for me? It may not necessarily be demonic. It may just be that the hardship is a testament that you are outside of the will of God. Again, I pray for you. The blueprint for the next level of your life. May God release it upon you. Is someone learning tonight? Number three, very quickly. What happens when we pray? When we pray, we receive direction for the next level. Receiving a blueprint is not the same as receiving direction. Receiving a blueprint talks of the mandate for the next level. But receiving direction for the next level, Isaiah 30, 21. Isaiah 30, 21. And thine ears shall hear a voice from behind you saying, this is the way. Listen, your blueprint talks of the place, but direction talks of the way to the place. You can know the place, but you may not know the way to the place. I tell you this, I have learned this as a leader and as a man of God, that one of the major reasons for the delay of people is confusion over direction confusion over direction your life is as fast as your knowledge of the direction are we together some of you most of you drive here if i tell you go to shop right or any one of these places and buy me something if you know the direction you can almost time your arrival there that in five or ten minutes except for traffic i am there but if you do not have direction even though you know the place you can go round and round and round until you find yourself in another state. And people ask you, what are you doing here? 
you say I started a simple journey to go to a shopping mall that was 10 minutes away and I began to go and go and go and go and lack of direction not lack of motion many of us the reason why we are stunted in life and in destiny is we have not had the voice saying this is the way walk in it if you're in business here listen to me by God's grace huh? I have sufficient financial intelligence by the mercies of God but I will tell you this the biggest risk you can take in your life in this end time is to use common sense you will fail in a way that your life will become a memorial for many people common sense has destroyed people you need divine direction the unbeliever who is doing business is not under attack because he's serving Satan you who has vowed to God that you will not bribe, you will not kill, you will not be corrupt. You are the one whose testimony Satan is interested in. You need divine direction. Someone say divine direction. Never take a step until you get clarity of direction. Write that down. Never take a destiny step till you get clarity of direction. 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 13. Let's hurry up. 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 13. I feel like starting ministry. Huh. You see, Ba, this direction sometimes is not just limited in showing you where to go. This direction is also showing you how to escape trouble. When Jesus was teaching us how to pray, he said, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. You know what temptation is? Anything that can have a hold on you and trap you down, he says, they had no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. Listen, but God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted above that which you are able to, but with that temptation, he will make a way to escape. A way to escape. A way to escape. That means when people put a snare for you, to trap you down in life, to trap you down in ministry. If you know how to pray, there is no snare of the fowler that shall ever lay sway on you. I'm telling you, if the devil puts a trap for you and you actually go in and enter there, it's because you did not maximize the riches that come in prayer. Are we together? Let us set this trap. So that when he comes, he will fall into it in ministry, fall into it in destiny, fall into it. And because you are directed by the Spirit, the Bible said the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. In the office, they orchestrate something and leave it for you. Just when trouble is brewing, they've been praying so that they trap you and take you out of that place. Now plus discernment, plus your prophetic destiny and now you have direction, you will be surprised. Most of us lack direction and you must pray. Ladies and gentlemen, direction does not come after one day of prayer. You will need to pray until it comes. But when it comes, you will obtain grace to run. You will run like Elijah when you have direction. I'm praying for you. Every confusion in and around your life, in the name that is above all names, in this season, may my God grant you direction as you submit to pray. May my God grant you direction as you submit to pray. In the name of Jesus Christ. Direction for the next level. For everyone that seeketh, find it. Matthew 7, 7 and 8. 8 says, for everyone that asketh, receiveth. Everyone that seeketh, find it. Everyone that knocketh, it shall be opened. You must cry for direction. Lord, where do I go with my wife and my children now? I've lost a job. I have opportunities to go to Canada. I have opportunities to go to UK. I have opportunities to go to wherever it is. But Lord, it looks tempting, I confess. But I cry for grace. I cry for grace. Give me direction. Where am I going to now? What is the next level of my life? I, I sense in my heart, I, I, I was praying for the next level in ministry. And I saw Bielsa. It doesn't mean Bielsa is where you go to. It can mean that's where an attack is coming from. You have to pray. Don't assume. Direction. As for me, 
if God does not speak about the next level of koinonia, we stay here honorably. But when he speaks, there is no power in existence. No power in existence. I rather mark time with God and move straight from this level into another level of victory than to keep taking many leaps without God and life will have to force you to return back to your last place of obedience and start the journey again. Number four, what happens when we pray? Are you ready? When we pray, we contend against spiritual forces that fight the actualization of our destinies. When we pray, we contend against spiritual forces that fight the actualization of our destinies. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12. Please give it to us quickly. We wrestle. First three words. For we wrestle. First three words. For we wrestle. The idea there is not a physical fight. This is a spirit communication. But that there is a contention. There are forces, demonic forces, determined to thwart prophecy, to thwart the purposes of God from finding expression in your life. I have taught you what governs Satan's attacking you is what God has said about your life. If God has not said anything about your life, I assure you Satan is not exactly interested in you. You can offer yourself to be attacked. He will tell you he's busy. What makes Satan interested in you is that he has seen the voice of God towards your direction. And he says, what has God said concerning Joshua Selman? What has God, why is the attention of God in this family? And out of the six people in this family, why is this lady and this guy? Let's go and find out what God is saying. Because Satan knows that God does not waste his time. And every time God speaks, his power, his grace, and his favor follows his word. So Satan looks for those who are carrying prophecy upon their lives. And they become his objects of attack per season. This answers the question, Apostle. How come this year has been full of attacks? Because of the word that came upon you. Now that you know, you don't just say attacks go away. You fight it. It's called the fight of faith. You fight it in the spirit. Many people do not know we have a fight of faith. My brother, hear me. Because God told you you will have a great ministry does not mean you will have a great ministry. Most people don't know how determined Satan is. You want to know how determined Satan is? Watch a life that does not pray and see how he does not stop till he wastes you. Satan does not spare. You will think after six years of oppressing you, he should pity you. The waste goes onward. That's why those who carry his spirit, for instance, terrorists, you see how they behave. You will think they should pity you because you are in pain. They don't mind wasting you. It's a reflection of their father, the devil. If you leave the devil and say, I'm sure he will only touch the family small. <laughs> no. He will only start small, but he will waste everything. As for me, I've made up my mind that my environment will perpetually be under a spiritual military surveillance. I will stand upon my watch and set myself upon the tower. And in the name of Jesus, I will fight a good fight of faith honorably. I will not let Satan come near Koinonia. I will not let him come near you. I will not let him come near me. Where will he go? Ask him. He can go where else, but not me. Someone say, not me. He didn't hear you. Not me. In the name of Jesus. Not me means not anything connected to me in the name of Jesus Christ. That you give birth to a healthy child and after five years your child starts misbehaving and they tell you it looks like this child suddenly has developed a problem. That is the devil. You need to know how to engage in prayer. Most times we discuss problems and we don't pray. Mothers pray. There is a campaign against the children. You see, I've told you this. All our children from age 13 or 14, maybe fair enough, 15, down to zero. I tell you, there is a definite project from hell to waste that whole generation. And any family that you can be rich, if you don't pray, you will be surprised. And I'm not talking about the vices that have plagued our world now. And unfortunately, the institutions that have been set up by Satan to advance Babylon. 
your child returns with something that stops you from sleeping asking you questions you cannot sleep as a parent learning all kinds of useless demonic things the generation of our parents was a generation of loyalty even if they didn't believe you they will respect you till you die but this generation will ask questions why should i believe in jesus give me at least three reasons i was taught in a school you didn't go to they use chalk and blackboard we are using apps give me an intelligent reason i will give you five while i should leave jesus give me three while i should stay this is the generation here today we grew up in a generation of cane and obedience cane and obedience no questions sit here why mm -hmm. don't ask questions your child will say why and you touch him the government will help him and say why I'm telling you the truth if we don't pray we are going to lose a whole generation lose a whole generation every koinonia child here I'm not talking of adult children our children in the name that is above all names any attack that is on any family if you're a mother here lift your hands or any attack I pray for you in the mighty name of Jesus that attack returns back to hell back to hell back to hell Back to hell, back to hell, back to hell, back to hell. Please be seated. Back to hell. Back to hell. Help them. The name of Jesus. By the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And if the devil has crept into any family, planting attacks. Let me tell you this. Satan can attack in whatever way. He can attack your health. He can attack your finances. He can attack a husband and a wife. They be living in peace. Just when prophecy is about to happen, the man will have a dream and see his wife with a knife. That is demonic manipulation. And if he does not have spiritual intelligence, sometimes, unfortunately, they now come to us men of God and we now say, ah, you've been staying with a witch. And that becomes trouble in the family. Again, I'm praying for you. Any family going through attack here, if you're not going through an attack, that's all right. But if you are going through any you are a series of events around your life that you have not understanding the last one month, the last two months, I pray for you, be delivered now. Be delivered now be delivered now strange occurrences in dreams strange occurrences it looks like there are all kinds of enmity from left right and center from the depth of my heart I pray for you may God show you a way of escape listen warfare is real did you hear what I said I ought to teach you the truth. Warfare is real. Satan will attack anything that carries the grace of God, including your destiny. Apostle, but I'm doing well in business. I just made one billion this month. Congratulations. It's not only you that saw it. Hell saw it. They saw the things you wrote. I will give 100 million to God's work. And Satan says, not when I'm here. Let's crash this business let's do let's plant a thief or let's change someone who was once good and turn that person somewhere else satan is that determined to destroy your destiny are we together now yes hmm. there are some of you god raise helpers i'm coming there we're about to pray some serious prayer this night make sure you open up your heart i tell you A woman once reached me true story and she was really angry at another woman angry and I told her calm down and she had a story that somebody who was going to help her that other woman they sat down doing women talk and they started saying all kinds of things against that one and that one was angry and said I did not know the woman I wanted to help is like this and just withdrew her help and support so when she later opened up and told the woman now who was in need why she didn't help her and traced it to that other one she was angry i usually don't have the time to respond to text message but sometimes when i look at certain things i know that you need to do some damage control else people will carry their mindset the woman was angry ah 
church people, betrayers. I said, mm -mm, that's not the issue. I said, madam, you are a spiritual person. I want you to look beyond this and to see that there is an attack. Ah, this is for this. I said, no, look beyond this. If you are angry at your fellow man and fellow woman, you have been cheated. You are void of spiritual intelligence. You need to see that there are invisible hands joining the heads of people. Whether it's the body of Christ or your family, I want you to see Satan behind these things. He uses men as puppets. Are we together now? It is the reason why you must pray. You must pray that God will take evil people out of your life. You must pray that God will preserve your peace by your godly means. You must pray. Now, I'm sorry to say this, but I remember there was a time I prayed for a lady, medical practitioner, and how did she contact HIV hospital? Um, you know, using whatever it is. And she did not even know. A reaction happened after a few months, and that was it. And I said, Lord, I will pray for you with all my heart. I went back and I was burdened. I said, this lady did not, I mean, you can imagine. Is it a crime now to be in a hospital? And this has happened. And you see, the thing with society is that they don't even have time to hear the truth. Once people hear whatever, everybody runs their mouths. People, there are people because of their pain, they are itching to hear everything bad about your life. It comforts them. We are going to pray. Oh, not my destiny. Oh, not my destiny. Not my destiny. In the name of Jesus. God has brought me thus far. I will not go up and come down. Not my destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. I will not go up and come down. Before I give you the remaining, take a minute and I'd like you to aggressively open your mouth and pray. I declare exemption. Is someone praying? Let it be from the depth of your heart. Exemption. From witchcraft. Exemption. From evil. Higher and higher. Not up and down. Glory to glory. Not glory and shame. Increase to increase, not increase and lack. Fire to fire, not on fire today and call tomorrow. Outside pray, Zaria pray. Every spiritual force against your relevance, against your advancement, in the name of Jesus, anti-destiny forces, by the power of the Holy Ghost, you came to church tonight. Contend in prayer. Some of you are not praying. Pray. Sakata bakata bakatosh. La branta kaparakata bakatosh. Rakates ke brente ke barantos kedech. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke every spirit, every gang up of hell against Koinonia, against Joshua Selman. Oh, you come in one way, you scatter in seven ways. In the name of Jesus, someone is praying. Attacks of death, attacks of sickness, mysterious sicknesses that cannot be explained medically. I challenge you. By the blood of the eternal covenant, I put a seal of the finished work of Christ over that situation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, you are still going to pray one prayer before I ask you to sit. One of the greatest areas of attack in this season is your finances. The Bible says strong men retain wealth. It takes wisdom to attract wealth, but it takes strength to retain it. And the strength of the believer is derived in the place of prayer. Lord, I will not laugh and cry at the same time. No, I have cried before. I will not laugh and cry again. Open your mouth and pray, especially over the supplies of heaven. I will not enjoy helpers and be left destitute again. Every orchestration, to take away helpers from your life to frustrate your finances so that you do not have the liberty 
to come to church the liberty to learn the ways of God in peace challenge it by the power of the Holy Ghost man of God pray woman of God pray businessman pray we contend in the place of prayer when we pray we challenge forces demonic forces over our destinies sitting upon the corridors of our destiny we ward off the arsenals of hell we establish the god over our lives we give it free way to its manifestation in jesus name we pray in jesus name we pray luke 22 31 32 please keep standing i will still give you the remaining and the lord said simon simon behold see you have eyes but you are not seeing satan has a desire and the desire is to sift you as wheat 32 but i have prayed for you every time i see satan's desire what i do about satan's desire is not to discuss it what i do about satan's desire is to say is not to say it will not happen the bible shows us what we do that every time we detect satan's desire over our lives we engage in the place of prayer can i tell you there are people satan wants to waste he doesn't want them to backslide he wants them to die because they have caused too much havoc and there are people Satan does not want them to cross 2025. It's not about saying God forbid. You forbid it by praying. Open your mouth in one minute and declare that every limitation, every attack over your advancement in the name of Jesus, we curse it by the blood of the eternal covenant. We curse it by the blood of the eternal covenant. We curse it. We dismantle demonic programs over our destinies we dismantle demonic programs over our destinies schedules of darkness orchestrations of darkness manifesting as bad news manifesting as evil we dismantle it online are you praying in the name of jesus not over my life not over koinonia in the name of jesus hallelujah please be seated very quickly you will stand up again so when we pray number four we contend against spiritual forces that fight our our destinies something happened i think it was maybe like four months or so ago was it we we're preparing for the u.s conference i'd finished praying i was tired and then i just lay down to sleep it was not up to 20 minutes I just felt like some kind of um, it was like a demonic presence very demonic presence within the room now I, I have all kinds of encounters you have no idea and as I just sensed that demonic presence it was almost like a tap to pray again and I got up with anger I don't know whether it was related to the conference, but everything on my mind that time was conference. So whatever stands the way, I assume you are interrupting the conference. My God, even in sleep, you can open fire. Yes, Shamakatoskiata. Scriptures, one, two, three, four. While they are moving, you fire with prayer again. Yes, sir. Don't laugh at what I'm saying. I'm teaching you how to win. Prayers. Alanda Kata. Only God knows what that prayer averted. Maybe it was accident. Maybe it was some trouble somewhere. Minus me. Oh, no way. The realm of the spirit will not decide a lot for me and manifest it and then I become a victim. No way. No way. No way. Listen. The next time you sense when your spirit man gives you a trigger that something is wrong don't wait till you understand even if you are walking on the road 
Don't worry about what scripture to bring. You just start praying in tongues. The scriptures are already within your spirit. They will start coming out one by one, like arrows, one by one. In the name of Jesus, one by one. As you pray, God will give perspective to what you are praying about. If you don't pray, you can be praying amiss, saying nonsense, whereas the attack is coming this way. Listen, 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 listen. You see, one advantage of prayer is that you can pray even under your breath. You don't have to disturb people. You are the one who is sensing what you are sensing. You don't have to pray only when you are sensing evil. When you are sensing good, you say amen by prayer. Because God is, you are, you are sensing and one of the ways you sense trouble is that your peace is disturbed. One of the ways you sense good things is supernatural joy that does not have any explanation. Sometimes it can be in the midst of things not working. You just know that your spirit has touched something in the spirit. Ah, your spirit has touched tomorrow. That good news is coming into your tomorrow. But you don't just know. You stay in the place of prayer. In the name of Jesus, the spirit and the bride says come. It must come. It must come by the power of God. Are you learning? Pray. Pray. Let's hurry up. We are still going to pray. Number five. Now listen to this one. When we pray, we schedule the needed help for every season. Ah, this is a powerful one. When we pray, I want to show you a mystery now. We schedule through prayer the needed help for every season. Acts chapter 9 from verse 10 to 11. While I was studying, preparing my notes, the Lord opened my eyes to this scripture. I'd never seen it in that light. Watch this. This was Saul of Tarsus, who had now become Paul. Listen. When Paul encountered God, he became blind. And he went to the house of Judah and stayed there. And the Bible says there was a certain disciple in Damascus named Ananias. Listen carefully. The Bible says, and to him said the Lord in a vision. Ananias, and he said, behold, I am here, Lord, verse 11. I like this. He says, and the Lord said unto him, watch this, arise and go to the street which is called straight and inquire of the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. Why will you go there as a helper? Read the last sentence. For behold. Behold. He did not just go there. The man was blind. And he said, Lord, you asked me to preach the gospel. Being blind is unnecessary. But he was praying. And while he prayed, in response to his prayer, verse 12, watch what was happening. Now, unknown to Paul, his prayer was helping to negotiate something serious here. And the Bible says, while Paul prayed, he had seen in a vision. Who did he see? A man. There are times you see angels, but there are times you need to see a man. It was in the place of prayer that he saw help coming. He saw a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he may receive his sight. And Ananias began to argue, verse 13, I have heard of this man, the many things, how that he has done. Watch this. While that is happening, Paul was still praying. Do you know? Watch this. Paul had seen Ananias coming in a vision, but physically, Ananias refused to go. And he was saying, God, I won't go. This man, I've heard of the things he has done. If Paul had stopped praying, Ananias will reject that offer and go away and leave Paul blind there and he would remain there. And if you were to interview Paul, Paul would say, I don't understand. In the place of prayer, I saw a vision that Ananias should come and Ananias has refused to come. It's not enough to see. You must pray it to happen. Many of you saw helpers coming and then immediately you saw it, you stopped praying because you said, since I've seen it, it must come to pass. No. 
while that is happening there are still negotiations happening Ananias refused I have heard of the many things that he has done but the Lord said to him verse 14 let's hurry go thy way for he is a chosen vessel who gave Ananias this, the explanation God who else would have given Ananias that explanation nobody it was because God said he's a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles he said oh really I've changed my mindset can I tell you there are some of you the only person who can explain to your helpers is God because the kind of reports they have about you about your family about your business it will be over their dead body to help you at that point you need to pray who is learning you need to pray the presence of helpers and say Lord it is by yourself you will speak to men I like what promise says here when it comes to take offering he says may God put it in the heart of men to help you it sounds like a very simple prayer but it's a very powerful prayer a rich man will not help you because he's rich he helps you because God puts your matter in his heart are we together I remember many years ago a pastor friend called me and humorously was saying he said apostle you have to pray for me i traveled to america and someone saw me and he was he had discussed that he wanted to give a seat to apostle can you imagine and the man tried 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 to make sure that he would bring the seat before my pastor friend would travel and package a very quality seed and gave him he said please help me and give apostle and when he came he said no this is not fair this man saw me not the one not the two are we together now this man saw me oh he knows that i'm a man of god too and he told me he would give a seed and not even that okay he gave apostles on then he said you're on for apostle and greet him that have been blessed by his life so when he came he was very nice man we we're just talking and, and i was saying well he said no you have to pray that prayer for me how can somebody give me a seat to come and give you <laughs> oh, oh, oh. My help has come oh, 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 oh. I want to share with you one story I won't tell you all of it sit down many years ago I was praying praying seriously and the Lord spoke to me until that time no one had ever blessed me beyond a certain amount i'm sharing this to the glory of god to help you i remember it was in the place of prayer the lord spoke to me and he said son the same way i have raised people to support the work i am going to be putting a mandate on people to support you as an individual not the ministry you as an individual i was happy but I knew already that if I kept quiet, that word would never come to pass because men are very wicked. And there are times that God will have to impress upon their spirits. Are we together? I remember taking out time to pray. One day, somebody, I was praying quite honestly, minding my business. And then I remember that time, I saw an alert and it was quite a generous alert. I just thought to myself, my God, I even left the money there first so that in case he I don't want any body to come nobody had sent that kind of amount at once and I said what is this a few months later the same kind of amount came again a few months later the same kind of amount came again and then it stopped and from that time people will say God has placed it upon my heart I said ah this thing works so oh. it works you don't pray alone huh but you see because we are in the business of priesthood there is a provision to see that we serve God conveniently as we bless his people and let me tell you the truth from that time I concluded that not all men are stubborn Lord leave the stubborn ones and go to the ones that have vowed that you should use them that's you've heard me I've advised you financially don't tie your mind to one person and say Lord 
Auntie A, Uncle B must bless me. It's a recipe for disaster. Because an individual can of their will say, I won't help this family, even though I have the means. Okay, we respect your will. Carry your trouble and go. Lord, raise help from another place. And where there are no men, for our sake, raise stones. I'm prophesying to someone in this season, unexpected sources, for the sake of your focus, your vision, your assignment, may my God raise strange help for you. Strange help for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Sit down. I don't share these stories to brag. Sometimes it's, a, it's very difficult, but it's important to share them sometimes. At least you understand. It is to encourage you. I remember when we were preparing for Sound of Revival, one time I got rich that there was somebody who wanted to be anonymous. And he wanted to find out the amount we were paying for the venue. He wanted to foot all the bills. I said, no, you cannot pay. We've already paid the money for the venue. Even though it was very expensive, but we thank God for the honor of being able to do that. But how does somebody give that kind of amount, hundreds of thousands of dollars, and you want to be anonymous? No, we're a responsible ministry. I have to know who you are to tell you thank you. He said, no, the man said he wants to be anonymous. He just wants a way that even though we have paid, he still wants to give the money. Every helper has relatives who are begging and he will not give them. People don't come because they have. They come because their hearts are touched. Are you learning? Nobody gives. Stop saying this man with all the money he has is not giving me. You are wasting your time. Go to the father of spirits in the place of prayer. Lord, every spirit is subject to your word, your name. Place it upon the heart of any man you choose. Raise help for me in this Abuja. I don't want to compromise. Raise help for me. You think God is not faithful to raise help for you? Except it's not the God of heaven. You can call for help in the place of prayer. No job, but pray. You are not lazy. Your CV is there. Now, I hear a lot of talk and sometimes, let me say this, sometimes... Um, we make mockery of prayer and I know what those who say that I know what they mean to say You know, we make a lot of mockery on prayer. We say everything is not prayer 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 I understand that most people say that because of the fanatism That has driven the prayer ministry and the inefficiency that has come from using prayer as the only key So I understand what they are trying to say when it has to do with the economy. There is productivity relationships transformation competence value understanding exchange these are valid principles nobody who wants to prosper and just praise alone uh, you are not using the keys effectively but another side again is there are people who have now said no 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 forget about it it's not about prayer it's not true it's not true the Bible says in everything by prayer everything is finance part of everything yeah I've told you that where prayer is not the key, prayer becomes the hand that holds the key. Even if you have a key, you need a hand that turns it. Are we together now? So I'm, I'm teaching you, I owe it to teach you. There are people who literally pray their way to favor. Favor brought the resources, wisdom multiplied it. Are we together now? Don't sit down and you are under fire. There are some of you right now who, with all due respect, maybe you are owing millions of naira, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of naira. You think it's productivity that will take you out. Productivity will help you start again when you are free. What you need is prophecy. You need to cry unto God for help. Otherwise, you will die in that pit. Are we together? At last, master, it was borrowed. The men were hardworking. The purpose of the axe was for them to cut a tree. They didn't ask God to cut the tree for them. But when the axe fell, it stopped because there was no ability to cut the tree again. And there was a miracle to restore the axe head. After it was restored, they now continued cutting. You do business when the capital is there. When the capital is not there, you are stunted. You need help. You need men. You need systems and structures to help you. Are we together now? There are many of us, the hardship around your life 
is a direct testament that there is no help. No help in ministry, no help in your home. Nobody has been concerned about your welfare nor that of your children. Are we together now? Don't waste your time selecting men by yourself. I have taught you this. Find a way of believing it. Don't waste your time trying to select men. Look unto Jesus and say, Father, you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I pray that you place it upon the heart of someone. Do you know, till today, I still pray for helpers. I still pray for helpers because I need helpers. The higher the assignment, the higher the help that is needed in every ramification financial helpers spiritual helpers there are people today god placed a burden upon them to pray for me as their assignment are we together now as an assignment i'm not saying what you do occasionally as their assignment so when we talk of help we're not just talking of you cannot pray enough for God will raise people, raise intercessory groups. There are some of them, I don't even know them. But God has placed it as a burden. Pray for apostle. That is your assignment. Say, Father, send help to my destiny. I want you to pray a mini from your heart and watch what God does. Say, Father, send help to my destiny. Pray that last one before I give you the last key. Please pray. Ha, send help. Lord, send help. I need help in ministry. I need help over my finances. Send help. Some of you, you may not need money, but there are other things you need. Very important things you need that make for life and godliness. Strategic connections, you need help. Access, you need help. Endorsements, you need help. The goodwill of strategic people, you need help. In Jesus' name we pray. When we pray, we schedule the needed help for every season. Every assignment God gives Koinonia has a financial requirement my own upkeep as his child and as his servant has a financial requirement it is my responsibility to in the place of prayer call for the needed help if you are too arrogant to call for help then you will find out that it will look as if God sent you and left you alone he says when I sent you lackest thou anything let me tell you the truth I am convinced that for as long as I serve the Lord, I will not lack bread to eat. I'm not serving him because of bread, but for as long as I am on this assignment, I will not lack bread to eat. I'll love him whether there's bread or not, sincerely, but I will not lack bread to eat. And that does not just mean bread for myself, for everyone that I have a responsibility over, I will not lack bread to give. Are we together? This is my understanding with God. This is my agreement with God. That I love him more than bread. But for as long as I'm serving him sincerely with all my heart, I will not lack bread to eat. It doesn't matter what happens. Even if the earth is brass and the heavens iron, I will not lack bread to eat. You have to believe this. When I sent you, lackest thou anything? And they said nothing. This is not because I'm a preacher. Preaching is only a vehicle to serve the Lord. When you serve him sincerely, he blesses your bread and your water. He takes sickness away from you. The days that he has a portion for you, he sees to it that you fulfill. Let me give you number six. Has someone been blessed tonight? When we pray, our spirits are quickened and we step into a, a realm of discernment. When we pray, we receive the prophetic blueprint that connects every season to every season. When we pray, we receive direction, strategic direction for the next level. When we pray, we contend against the spiritual demonic forces that fight the actualization of our destinies, that fight prophecies over our lives. When we pray, number five, 
we schedule the needed help help as men help as advantage of systems number six when we pray we build capacity that qualify us for greater glory when we pray we build capacity that qualify us for greater glory listen to this and then we pray when we pray we build capacity that qualify us for greater glory Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 16 when we pray you cannot build capacity if you do not pray Paul prayed over the church in Ephesus that he would grant you the he being God by his spirit according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man someone say strength shout it say strength again say capacity you need capacity within your inner man listen to me the level of anointing that God has placed upon my life now was not the level when we started with him it would be unfair of him to have placed that kind of grace upon my life because my capacity then would not be able to carry and host this level of glory so here's how it works the greater your capacity in the spirit the greater the anointing that God can invest upon you are we together the greater the excelling of the glory that emanates from you the greater the assignment the greater the ease of operation this is how it works the things that were difficult for me yesterday by every standard are now easier to do not necessarily because the challenge is left but because capacity was built in the spirit are we together now yes when you do not build capacity there is a limit to which God can trust you with his program or with the next chapter of your own prophetic program in Christ whatever God wants to do in your life does not just happen at the instance of his will alone it depends on your capacity for some of you God wants to do much but the truth is that you are still at yesterday's level you have not enlarged are we together now you have not broken forth to your left and right back and forth God cannot place greater grace upon your life it is a waste when you pour one drum of oil into one bucket you are going to waste one drum minus one bucket that's what you wasted am i right on that everything beyond one bucket is going to be a waste so you have one drum of oil and you pour that one drum into one bucket the only thing you will have at the end of it is one bucket anything beyond one bucket will pour on the ground that's how many of us are and so because god is not an author of waste he will limit growth and limit progress until your capacity gives you space to do the more when i pray i ask god to enlarge my capacity i'm happy and grateful for where he's brought me but as the mandate as we continue to unfold another layer of what god is doing in koinonia another layer of what god is doing in my life you see that now the apostolic ministry is very progressive as God is trusting us with greater assignments it is not just the awareness of the assignment but greater capacity there is a man of God here God wants to do so much with you but the truth is that at your current level God cannot do much with you there are certain people God cannot bring to your life the wisdom the power the grace you do not have that capacity and so we pray the Bible says but ye all building yourselves on your most holy faith praying in the Holy Ghost it says he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself first Corinthians 14 and verse 2 edifieth himself edifieth himself verse 4 2 down to 4 edifieth himself edifieth himself edifieth himself you must learn to edify yourself there are times you do not have any prayer language at all you just i mean in any prayer point you go to the place of prayer and you are investing time for growth i have taught you here that among the many assignments of prayer generally speaking the first the greatest of them is for your growth and for your transformation the day i stop praying as a habit as a positive spiritual ritual 
I have pegged myself at a level and I will never grow again. And you see, when the challenges outgrow your level of anointing, you see that now? You make, you put God in a position where he's going to have to take the people to another place of help, another vessel that is aligned in a greater way. Now, spiritual things and the results we command in the kingdom, they look very easy. It is because the capacity that is producing them in righteousness is at a level that can trivialize those challenges. If you do not grow as the needs of the people grow, it will get to a point where your spiritual stature can no longer be used to solve their problems. This is the tragedy, respectfully, of many, many men of God across this nation, Africa, they became stunted in their growth. The comfort of ministry, a good car, a good house, good honorarium, ease, air conditioning system, business class, luxurious living just eroded the discipline and the passion for prayer. And then they found out that they stayed at a level where they are no longer relevant to the needs of those God has sent them to. And let me tell you this, once you no longer can bless the people God has sent you to, they will detect your exhaustion in the spirit. They can know that you are exhausted. They won't be angry with you, but they know that there's, there's nothing more. This, this man cannot solve the reality of the problem that befalls me. He does not have the grace. He can't take me further from here. My prayer as a man of God is that I never punish you by my carelessness and my refusal to grow. Are we together now that i do not limit your efficiency spiritually simply because i have refused to contend for greater light greater growth greater transformation the more i am enlarged in the spirit the more god can trust you with that holy oil the more god can place that anointing upon your life i want you to lay your hands on your head and ask the lord to grant you the grace to pray until you are enlarged pray that prayer to pray until you are enlarged, to pray until you expand, to pray until you are enlarged, that what looks like full oil, by the time you enlarge it, will go down and give space for higher dimensions of that oil to be poured on you. Someone pray. Someone pray. Grace to pray till I am enlarged, enlarged in the spirit, enlarged in wisdom, Enlarge for more power. Enlarge to host greater graces, greater glory. One minute you are praying. Make it a desperate, sincere, passionate prayer. I obtain grace to pray. When we pray, we are enlarged. When we pray, we build capacity capacity that allows the more the more of his glory the more of his power the more of his wisdom a few more seconds are you praying we're in a very serious season as a body of christ there is a call for greater enlargement greater enlargement God wants to bring greater oil. He wants to pour graces, end time graces, end time anointings. But he's looking for vessels that are enlarged. In Jesus mighty name we pray. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Now look up, we're wrapping up. When we don't pray we are not only robbed of this but there are things that happen when we don't pray I don't have the time but I will give you three of them when we don't pray number one we faint Luke 18 1 when we don't pray we faint the word fainting there is to lose momentum to lose energy to lose vibrancy your vibrancy in the spirit your passion in the spirit is sustained by the fire that your prayer life produces 
when we don't pray we faint number two when we don't pray we die I don't mean die like spiritual death alone literally physically we die you may not see it because you don't die in one day when we don't pray it's like a farm with no farmer plowing it no sowing no mowing grasses no nothing the reason why we die is because the thief killing is part of what he does he does not only steal and destroy when we don't pray we don't ward off satan and his cohorts and darkness we will die spiritually die financially eventually die physically do the experiment trouble satan and don't pray save souls transform lives give to the kingdom love the lord make sure that the kingdom goes forward then don't pray it's not only god that knows us the thief too knows you if he has not come it's because he's on his way or you have learned how to restrain him when we don't pray we faint when we don't pray we die finally when we don't pray we never birth prophecies prophecies fail I preached a message many years ago why prophecies fail I gave one reason that time but I found more reasons now with time the reason I gave that time was the weakness the humanity of man and that is true but in addition to it there are many reasons why prophecies fail it is not just the humanity of men prophecies fail because all prophecies are seeds when prophecies come from the lips of God they rest upon the womb of time something must be done to incubate prophecies until they mature and they are birthed are we together now you nurture prophecy by prayer you birth prophecy by prayer so prophecies fail even if you are not exhausted and you do not engage strategically in prayer you will never be able to birth the program of God if for any reason God ever told you anything you are sure of and it never came to pass I can tell you in diagnosing that condition spiritually most likely it was because you did not stay with God agreeing in the place of prayer to incubate that prophetic word to maturity to fruition and then birthing it in the place of prayer everything God tells you your next assignment is to pray you are not just praying to fight Satan even if Satan is not there the process of praying to birth things is a spiritual technology it is not always about demons when a baby is in the womb of her mother it's not about demons it is the process of growth you nurture it in the place of prayer and when it is the ninth month in the spirit you push through prayer as soon as Zion travails, she shall put forth a son. A son can mean a vision. A son can mean a new dimension. A son can mean another level in grace. Take note of this. When we do not pray, we faint. When we do not pray, we die. By every definition of death, we lose life financially, relationally, health-wise, until we finally die because we give the thief access to carry out his ministry in our lives and finally when we do not pray we abort prophecy we do not stay with God to nurture and to birth prophecy to give it physical expression it is for this reason ladies and gentlemen that he spake a parable to the end that koinonia to the end that Joshua Selman to the end that you and your family you and everyone around you that they pray and not to faint rise up on your feet I want you to go back home after tonight's service and take the time to listen to this message again don't assume you understood everything I said and where you think you don't want to hear it let the message play while you pray and don't stop praying 
till the message is over. You can use it. Prayer is not so much about timing. You have been taught here. It is not the time to pray. You are focused on what God is birthing. Are we together now? But sometimes it can be a guide to help you. Trying to provide discipline for you to pray. I like you to pray one prayer and then I speak over your life. The grace that you have heard this, that you will not be a victim of it. It will be beyond good preaching. It will be beyond the lecture, beyond the spiritual admonishment. That this will contribute to your efficiency, your rising, your becoming in the spirit. Open up your mouth and pray in one minute. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Give him praise for all that you've heard tonight. Give him thanks and give him glory. Give him thanks and give him glory. When we pray, many things happen. The wonders of consistent prayer. Now finally pray for the grace to pray consistently. Some of you pray, but your inefficiency lies in your inconsistency. Obtain grace to be disciplined in prayer. Obtain grace to practice the ritual of strategic prayer with understanding. Obtain grace to pray. No excuses. Obtain grace to pray. The discipline to pray. To structure a prayer program. A prayer system around your life that keeps all these and more happening in your life. In Jesus mighty name we pray. I'm about to speak over your life. But let me make an altar call quickly before I do the speaking. I want to give someone an opportunity to run to Jesus. When you pray to an unknown God, it is still idolatry. What gives our prayer value is that we know who we are calling upon. The Bible says, the Lord is nigh them that call upon him. Are we together? There were men in the Bible who prayed and showed zeal and worship towards an unknown God. There are many Christians who are praying to a deity. We don't pray to a divine being, some cosmic power somewhere. The prayer of the believer is relational, not transactional. Many faith practices do not need relationship. They only fulfill rituals and get returns from it. It is purely and only transactional. But the believer's prayer life is not just predicated on the correct observance of these rituals, but a genuine relationship with the one you are calling upon. Someone came to church tonight and honestly, you do not have a functional relationship with Jesus, the son of the living God, or perhaps you need a renewal. You need a restoration of your relationship. Wherever you are, uh, I want to thank you for your patience, allowing those who should be saved to come. Wherever you are, we have a minute for you. I'd like you to leave your seat. You're saying apostle, whether you're in Zaria, following online, or you are here, and you're saying apostle, give me a minute. Let me make it right with Jesus genuinely. I love you with all my heart, and tonight is your night for salvation. I count one to five. I want you to leave your seat and come right here in front of me. Don't wait for anyone to be the first. Jesus loves you. He's calling you to a richer and a fuller life. Number one. Two. Let's celebrate them as they come. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, my sister. I see people coming. Leave him, leave him, leave him. Let him. Since that's what he wants, go ahead. Come. Keep clapping. Let's celebrate them. You don't have to kneel. You can stand. The gentleman insisted on kneeling, and that's why we allowed him. Three, if you're still coming, please run. Come. Don't be ashamed. This is one big family. We're celebrating the hand of God with you. That it's a new season for you. There's still someone who needs to leave his seat and come. Come quickly. Come quickly. You're outside. You're up the balcony across. Come quickly. If you are not able to make it to the front here, you can go to the front of your LED. Still serves the same purpose. Come. One last count and I begin to pray. Five. I still see a sister running. Come, join them. God bless you. God bless you, my friend. 
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much. First to all of you, every time we make the altar call, I wanted to thank you for motivating these people. It's not just Joshua Selman leading them to Christ. We're doing it together. It matters when the Lord is saying thank you to all those who have been saved. There will also be a credit to you for being part of this. I'm just the one privileged by God to help them make the confession that leads to salvation. But because our hearts are together, I want you to know that every time souls are coming here, it's not just Joshua Selman who is the soul winner. Every single one for your claps, for allowing them, for your encouragement, you are part of the process leading to their salvation. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very, very much. Okay, I see a young lady coming. Please join them. God bless you, my sister. God bless you. Lift your right hand, all of you who have come. Thank you very much for the courage to come. And for anyone who is falling online, please pray the prayer as I lead this precious one. Say, Lord Jesus. Say it again, Lord Jesus. Tonight, I have heard your word. I love you with all my heart. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight, I'm a child of God. I go forward ever and backward never. Amen. I pray for you now in the name of Jesus that the hand of God will rest upon you, that this declaration truly will cause you to walk in victory all the days of your life. I bless you and I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God. You'll go from glory to glory, grace to grace. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Please look to my right. That should be your left. You will have a word with the counselors and then you quickly return to your seat. Let's honor them as they go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Now let me remind you again that I've been encouraging us, I think in the last two or three weeks, to be more passionate about in-gathering. You will wonder why I'm asking you to be an active part of soul winning and drawing people to the house of God in spite of what God has done in our midst. Um, it's not about crowd and size. It's a mandate. And it is part of our training to be actively involved in soul winning and bringing people to the house of the Lord. This is beyond a passion to increase membership. We have to give people an opportunity to hear the things that you're hearing. And not just for people to participate offline, it's important that you help them know that this is what God is saying. And when it is time for koinonia, not just koinonia here, but any koinonia program at all, including our external ministrations, make sure that you help people connect, that they find life, they find hope. When they're giving their testimonies, they will give credit to God and the Lord himself will bless you too for being a conduit, being part of the stories of these people. So don't rob people an opportunity, your family members, your friends, your sphere of influence, get the teachings across to them. Are we together now? And make sure that your life is an active part of people's knowing the Lord, people's being transformed, finding life and finding solutions. Now I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. The grace to pray and to pray consistently. I release that grace upon you. The grace to pray and to pray consistently. I release that grace upon you. The quickening of the spirit that sponsors your discipline to stay in the place of prayer until you are transformed, you are changed, till you discern, receive it in Jesus' name. And I pray for you. The benefits that come from prayer, may it be evident in your life. The help that prayer brings, may you experience it in your life. The wisdom that prayer brings, may you experience it in your life. The direction that is obtained in the place of prayer, may you experience it in your life. 
in the name of Jesus Christ every attack on your prayer life I decree and declare that that attack gives way now everything you see in the place of prayer according to the will of God may your hands handle it speedily I declare you blessed in Jesus name your weak beginning is blessed in Jesus name the hand of the Lord is strong upon you his grace is multiplied upon your life the wisdom of the Spirit is producing results in your life your week is full of favor your week is full of help your week is full of victory in the name of Jesus that by Sunday you'll be eager to come and testify indeed you will say see what the Lord has done every crying stops as you step into this week shame and reproach comes to an end as you step in this week for your shame receive double in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen let's share the grace together in fellowship may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ the love of God the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forever amen surely all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever amen God bless you those for the medical people please if you are applying for the medical training please make sure you go to the medical stand the Lord bless you and see you next week In the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain 